Hello students, in today's class we are going to study about atomic orbitals. Now what do we mean by atomic orbitals? Before we start off with what are atomic orbitals, let me explain you what is an atom. So whenever I am talking about an atom, there are three important subatomic particles I need to address. Those are protons neutrons and electrons the protons and the neutrons are a part of the nucleus that is the reason why they are also known as nucleons because they are inside the nucleus so i have a proton and a neutron both of them are inside a nucleus and electrons are outside the nucleus which follow a proper path. The dashed line that I'm drawing are known as orbitals. Now what exactly are orbitals? Orbitals are nothing but the paths. This is nothing but a, but a path which an electron follows while it is rotating or revolving around the particular nucleus. Atomic orbitals are mathematical functions that provide us insight into the wave nature of electron. Now what do we mean by wave nature of electron? That means this particular nature of electron which allows the electron to move around the nucleus is the wave nature of electron or pair of electrons that exist around the nuclei of the atoms. Apart from that, we have in the field of quantum mechanics and atomic theory, these mathematical functions are often employed in order to determine the probability of finding an electron. Now, what do I mean by that? In this particular entire orbital, I know that this electron is over here. This electron is over here. We have to find the probability of finding an electron. That means that if I need to find out electrons inside a particular atom, I need to know where that particular electron will belong to. And these orbitals help us in distinguishing or classifying them easily. For example, this electron belongs to the first orbital. This electron belongs to the second orbital. So we can simply go to these orbitals and find electrons. Now, why do we need to determine a probability of finding the electron. Why do we have to find the electron? We have to find electrons because electrons are nothing but energy. We all know that protons are positively charged ions, neutrons are neutral ions, and electrons are negatively charged ions. Now, when I'm talking about a negatively charged ion, this negative charge is nothing but negative energy. And this energy, can be used in creating various other energies. For example, whenever we want to create electricity, we move the electrons in a particular direction. When all the electrons are moving in a particular direction, the current gets generated by itself. If the current is getting generated, electricity is being produced and which can be used by our home appliances. But to produce that particular electricity, to get into that particular current, we need to find out where exactly an electron will be there. And thus having orbitals to make sure that that particular electricity is being found out and done when well is important. It is important to note that the atomic orbital, now over here they are using the term atomic orbital, can be used to refer to a physical space or a physical region around the atom's nucleus. That means when I'm drawing a nucleus, let me draw the nucleus again. What is there in the nucleus? We have a proton, neutron. That means any number of protons and neutrons. And this part which is embedding the proton and neutron is the nucleus. Outside the nucleus, I'll have an electron. And this particular electron is moving in a particular orbit. Let me draw a couple of more electrons in the next orbit, two electrons. Both of these electrons are moving in one of the orbit. That means the next orbit is having two electrons. And this is how my atom is made. 
After that, I have another atom over here, proton, neutron, nucleus, and one electron over here, which is moving. Something like this. Now, if I see from here to here, this is my physical space or a physical region for this particular atom. From here to here, this is the physical space and the physical region for this particular atom. That means we know from where the atom is starting and where the atom ends off. This, this particular space cannot be considered for any of the atom. The atom starts over here in the middle of the nucleus and will end over here at the end. Over here also the atom will start over here in the middle of the nucleus and will end over here in the end. And this becomes the physical region or this becomes the physical space around the atom. The presence of an electron in such a region can be predicted by mathematical form of atomic orbitals. Now there are various ways of finding out how a particular atomic orbital works out. But we are going to find out using the mathematical way. Now what is it over here? We have, it is important to note that the characteristics of atomic orbital depend upon the values of quantum numbers. Now there are many numbers which will be used to determine the probability of an electron or to find out the atomic orbital and the first is quantum numbers. The principal quantum number is denoted by n. Now there are various other quantum numbers as well. Let us try learning them. Over here we just have a principal quantum number and it is denoted by n. Let us see various forms of different quantum numbers. Over here let me just write principal quantum number because that was in the previous slide. Principal quantum number it is given to us by n. The next quantum number, if you look over here, is the azimuthal quantum number. The azimuthal quantum number, also known as the orbital angular momentum. That means the another name for azimuthal quantum number is angular momentum, orbital angular momentum quantum number. And the symbol is L. Again, that is important. Let us make a note of it. Azimuthal quantum number and that particular quantum number has a symbol n. Of course, all of these quantum numbers are useful for finding out an atomic orbital. So over here we have L. The third we have is the magnetic quantum number and the symbol is M. Generally, we write it M, we can also write, as a, write it down as M1. So we have magnetic quantum number. This magnetic quantum number helps us determine whether that particular element is going to be magnetic or not, like diamagnetic, paramagnetic, ferromagnetic. We'll come to that in detail. Furthermore, it can be denoted that each atomic orbital can hold maximum of two electrons. Very important, maximum of two electrons, not more than two electrons. The completely, okay, now we are talking about orbital, not the orbit. Orbital can contain two electrons. In completely occupied orbitals, that is the atomic orbitals containing two electrons, each of the electron has equal and opposite spin. Equal and opposite spin. Let me just draw it for you. If I have this particular orbital with me, it is denoted like this. This is spin in one direction, this is spin in another direction. This spin is going upward, this spin is going downward. This is equal, but it is opposite in direction. So it has an equal and opposite spin when compared to each other. Insight into the electron spin is provided by the value of the spin quantum number, which is denoted by ms. So over here, the last thing we have we also have is a spin quantum number and that spin quantum number is denoted by ms. So we have four quantum numbers which help us in finding out the atomic orbital. 
the mathematical equation or the mathematical version of the atomic orbital we start off with the principal quantum number over here principal quantum number is nothing but the number of shells then we have the azimuthal quantum number again denoted by l moving on to magnetic quantum number this particular quantum number helps us determine whether that particular element because we are going to go about the electrons of a particular element right so whether that particular element is good enough to consider as a magnetic substance now how do we do that we have three types of magnetic substances a diamagnetic substance a paramagnetic substance and a ferromagnetic substance diamagnetic substances are not magnetic at all they repel from the magnets paramagnetic substances are temporary magnets so under the influence of something they would act as a magnet but eventually they cannot be turned into permanent magnets and ferromagnetic substances are the substances which can be turned into permanent magnets very easily finally we have the spin quantum number but for the spin quantum number we need a spin for this one important thing we need to remember is both the spins are equal and opposite and orbitals only contain two electrons and then lastly we have the spin quantum number is ms thus insight into any electron residing in an orbital in a given atom can be obtained by determining the values of the four quantum numbers described now what are the four quantum numbers the principal quantum number the azimuthal quantum number the magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number principal quantum number is given to us by n azimuthal quantum number is given to us by l magnetic quantum number is given to us by m1 spin quantum number is given to us by ms over here we have a picture of two different orbitals this particular thing which i am drawing over here this is the path which an electron will take while it is revolving around a particular nucleus now where is my nucleus this particular thing is the nucleus and this is the path and this is determined around the x axis the y axis and the z axis so this can be the shape or a path of an electron and the path or a shape of an electron is nothing but an orbital similarly over here also we have the nucleus in the middle this is the nucleus and an electron will move into a dumbbell shaped path this is the path which we are going to offer this is how an electron is going to move this is how it looks while it is moving so for the first one we had a very circular path very easy this was how it was for the second one we had the dumbbell shaped path something like this an electron can move in any way an electron has various shapes of moving and these various shapes are nothing but orbitals and orbitals are various kinds of shapes and names this is my nucleus and over here this was the nucleus again this moves for x axis y axis and z axis so these were the basics of atomic orbitals and this is how we started off with atomic orbitals what basically is atomic orbital how to calculate it and how are the different shapes of it thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned thank you